Let me start by saying I am not the original creator behind all of this buzz, but I am the guy who is going to show you how to turn your MIG welder into a TIG welder, or a very crude one at least. Now, a welding machine is essentially nothing more than a power supply. Some do it just a little bit different than others, and some have a different process and output and all the rest of that good stuff, but at the end of the day, it is nothing more than a power supply. You don't necessarily need a Feronius Transteel 2200 to do it. In fact, you could use any of the other ones you have, provided that your consumables are the correct size to make it all happen. But we don't want to hear about welding machines and consumables. Let's just show you exactly how to switch all of that stuff over and use your power supply to, well, basically make a different process. Here we go. This is pretty easy, but it does require a bit of precision, uh, so you might want a good drilling machine or maybe a mill or something that uh, will actually uh, accurately measure and drill it down, because if you drill it crooked, yeah, game over. But you need a, you need a tip, a, a MIG tip, that, that will allow a collet to slide down into it after you bore it out. Speaking of boring it out, we have to first make sure we have enough room for our tungsten. That's what this drill bit is for. This is one step above our tungsten diameter, which is 332 or 2.4 millimeter, and I went 1 64th of an inch over that. Now, when it comes to drilling, make sure you take your dear sweet time running through all of this. Make sure it's clearly lubricated nicely, uh, and make sure you clear all of those chips out of the flutes uh, a lot, and take your dear sweet time. This metal would absolutely love to get a hold of the uh, the actual drill bit, snag it, and snap it right in half. So make sure you take your dear sweet time. As soon as I have the bore for the tungsten drilled all the way through, I'm going to start working on the collet. Now I need the depth of the collet to go all the way down uh, with the exception of the shoulder. The shoulder needs to stay just above that top section where the threads are. So I'm going to just kind of eyeball it actually, and there's a reason why, which I'll show you why in just a second. But again, take your dear sweet time, a good amount of lubricant, clean the flutes well, and as soon as you have it finished, you should have something that looks just like this. Notice the shoulder of the collet is just above that thread. Now to give myself a little bit more compression on that collet when it goes in there so it can squeeze down on the tungsten, I'm gonna take just a little bit off the top there. And now the final assembly, you should have a MIG tip that serves now as your collet body. You can slide the collet inside of it, and of course on the opposite end of it, you should be able to slide your tungsten right into the new collet tip body and the collet itself. So that way when you install it into the MIG gun, it should compress that tungsten slightly and hold it in place so that way it doesn't just fall right out. Now in order to install it, there's nothing special about this, just simply remove the nozzle, insert your new MIG TIG collet tip body tungsten assembly <laughs> into the end of it and stick your nozzle back on. That's as easy as it gets as far as uh, the torch goes, make sure you give it a wiggle and it doesn't fall right out. Now on to the business end. I have my Fronius Transteel 2200 set up to run in the synergic mode, but uh, I don't need to weld anything like that. I'm going to go to manual, and I'm just going to set this around 16 volts, because I'd like to do a, a lap joint, an eighth inch lap joint on some stainless steel, just for fun here, because that's what I have laying around. Now if you have a multi-process machine that has dual input uh, gas solenoids, make sure that you put it on the MIG side, because that's what you're actually going to be uh, using is the MIG side. And speaking of gas, we're going to run 100% argon. Nothing, no steel mix, no nothing. Just 100% argon to run TIG. Now, this is the most important part. Make sure that you convert your machine over to DC electrode negative, meaning the MIG gun itself needs to be negative and the clamp or the earth or the ground lead needs to be positive. Make sure you switch it over that way, otherwise you're frying tungsten. Now you have essentially a scratch start TIG with a MIG gun, and this is pretty much what it looks like. This is actually surprisingly difficult because it's so big and bulky, but you know what, this is a fun fact for you guys. This is the very first weld that I ever laid down doing this process, and I made sure to get it on camera so you guys could seriously laugh at what it looks like. But let's get in close real quick and have a look here. The very first MIG-TIG combo weld that I've ever done on stainless steel. Uh, definitely tricky. Gotta work on that post flow 
And uh, yeah, got to really pay attention. However, I'm pretty sure you guys want to know what it looks like behind the lens, and this is it. Further proving that this is legitimate. It's not a bogus or BS thing. And if you really doubt it, uh, you know, try it. You'd be surprised. Uh, just for fun, I decided to run it just like a MIG welder. This would be the equivalent of a detogenous pass on stainless steel, and it's a lot more stable. It's a lot easier to run. <laughs> but I'm sure with some practice, you know, it could be better. Now this is how I figured it would be actually easiest to run this, and it takes a little bit more body motion and movement because the, uh, well, because the MIG gun is a lot bigger than a TIG torch, but you know what, surprisingly, it, uh, it kind of made it a lot easier to do. But again, if you don't believe me, just try it. Now you know how to do it. This is just wild. Ah, so I guess the question, could I see this being useful? You know what, if you're in a jam or something and you need to get like some stainless welded or uh, you just need like a tight, precise, more precise maybe than MIG arc and uh, you have the stuff to make it happen, sure. Um, Practicality wise, that's, uh, that's pretty tough. Uh, but you know what, it sure is fun. How about that? So uh, yeah. yeah, maybe there is a use for it. I mean, if you maybe just want to fart around or you know, enjoy it or something like that. But either way, hey, it is what it is. So that's about going to wrap it up for this episode. I want to thank you guys for watching. As always, if you need to get in touch with us, you can uh, hit us up on the FabricationSeries.com website, Instagram at the.fabricator, or Facebook.com slash the Fabricator Series. Info is down in the description. And of course, comment, like, share, all the rest of that good, good. Make sure you ring the bell. I'm out of here. We'll see you guys later. <laughs>